Hey, my name is Brandon Lacey Campos, um, and I wrote a book last year called It Ain't Truth If It Doesn't Hurt. Can you see it? Can you see? Oh, okay. Um, and it's a book of poetry. Um, and uh, I happen to love it. Um, I met a new friend recently by the name of Lenise Coates. And Lenise heard uh, a recording of some of my poetry and encouraged me or said that she wanted to hear more. So I said, sure, I'll record some. Um, why don't I record some from my book? So here is the first video recording of um, me reading from this collection, uh, which again is called It Ain't Truth If It Doesn't Hurt. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Uh, you can go to my publisher, which is Rebel Sartori Press. Rebel Sartori Press. Uh, I'll put something on this video later that'll tell you how to get it. Um, and then you also get amazing artwork in it too. So this is a poem called Carrie about my grandfather. I remember that day when mom called and said you didn't make it. She told me that you held her hand and died. You asked her to fly with you and to bring me too. I would have found a way like Icarus. I would have made a wings of wax and feathers or of mud and leaves. Anything that would have lifted me with you on a flight to the sun. I would have been afraid for my wings to melt because you were Grandpa Carrie and you would have carried me. You would have carried me like you did when you were alive, tucked underneath your arm or huddled beneath one of your stories. You would have carried me like you did our family that you supported until your lungs gave out from the asbestos, that you carried even when your laughter, wheezing from your chest, oxygen lifelines in your nose. You swore that my chuckle was contagious. That as a baby I laughed so hard and deep that you had to laugh too, but it was you, always you, that gave to me. You filled my mind and my stomach with your wit and buttermilk pancakes, your gentle hugs and calloused hands that smelled like roofing tar and sawdust. It was you that knew all my secrets, would ask me, how was Grandpa's little girl? I would answer, Grandpa, I'm a boy. And you would smile, maybe not understanding gay, but understanding different. White man, native man, caught between the res and reality, and you loved me just the same. It's been six years since you left us. Seventy-two months since I heard your voice. More than two thousand days since you went home. This poem has been fifty-two thousand five hundred and sixty hours in the writing because I still look for you. On holidays, I sit in my spot on the couch and look for you in your chair at the end of the kitchen table where the floor slants downward, the foundation settling into the dirt. Sometimes I hear you playing solitaire and you swore you never cheated, but you always won. Sometimes I play cribbage with your ghost and I remind you of the one time I beat you and as usual you pretend not to hear. Just like when we would watch Wheel of Fortune together and you'd play deaf if I guessed the puzzle before you did. I pray to you sometimes and I think God is too busy to listen because you were never too busy for me and sometimes when I think I can't make it, I can hear your rocking chair creaking and the sound of Price is Right with no TV in sight. I remember the day that we, when we watched the black televangelist on KDLH, you announced that someday that could be me. I shook my head and you said that with faith I could do anything. With faith I could move mountains. With faith I could make the blind see. With faith I could change the world, but faith never brought you back to me. Faith hasn't brought back the only man I ever loved unconditionally, and sometimes I get so angry that I never got to say goodbye, that I won't go to your grave because I'm afraid the finality of stone nourished by your body will take away the faith I have left. I'm trying to understand why he took you, when at times like today I need you. I need you because you're the only father I have ever known, and while you aren't in heaven, I'm here alone. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, and the courage to say goodbye to the man who carried me and carries me still. That was Carrie. Thanks.